in this class we will uh, discuss about uh, bill of quantities and cost estimate for a typical birthing structure. This cost estimate is based on the rates in 2010 and it gives an idea how to calculate the cost estimate. Bill of quantity we are not discussing and there are mainly four components one is the piles and diaphragm mall. The cost of this element is more than 75 percent in any birthing structure. Other things are deck structures, wharf accessories and if you have dredging and then if you want to form the bund or stone pitching that also comes under some miscellaneous items that also we will discuss. We will discuss this cost estimate under these four categories. This shows a typical birthing structure the dredge level is minus 15. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rows of pile and here we have the diaphragm wall on this side the ground level is somewhere here at this point. Originally the whole structure, whole structure can be built on land and then you can dredge or you can build only the breakwater on land other things if they are already dredging is carried out we can do this construction. Stone pitching is required if the diaphragm wall design has to be optimized. So, the piles and diaphragm wall is one section first section then we have the deck superstructure then the fenders bollards that is the third section dredging and stone pitching is the fourth section these are the four sections under which we will be giving the rates for ports. This shows a construction site at uh, Chennai port this is a second container terminal. So, we have uh, typically about uh, 4 rows of piles here 1, 2, 3, 4 I am sorry 5 rows of piles 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. There is a tube which is transporting the there is a walkway in which there are uh, concrete is uh, transported through the tube. And we are see what we are seeing is the piles here, then we have the pile cap and the major uh, time taken is for the piles. After construction of this uh, piled jetty, they want to fill up this whole area with the sand and then they want to give a pitching below the deck system. These are the construction equipments, floating barges that are used for construction purpose. Here what we are seeing is a piling gantry. There are two gantries here, this is a two pile gantry and this is a three pile gantry. These are moving ahead as they are going forward they will be driving the piles. This shows the filling up of the sand behind the berth. Here you are seeing the five rows of piles, then we have the stone pitching that is being carried out. Here we have an anchor rod also to tie back the system. And here we are having the fenders which are fixed at a later date. The dredge level is about minus 15.5, and here we do not have any diaphragm wall, we are having a sand fill, then we have a rock toe embankment. This natural slope, what will form, will be about 1 is to 3, and we make it steeper 1 is to 1.8. Deck system consists of basically some beams and then a RCC slab and we have crane beams one crane beam here and another crane beam here which we will show in the next slide. The center to center spacing between crane beams for container operation is about 30 meters. So, once we construct the pile in the pile cap then we have some integration between the precast beams and the pile using this uh, rods. So, when you use the precast beams a U shaped beam with reinforcement inside and uh, supported on the pile cap you should make it integral with the pile reinforcement. There is a gantry here this is more than 30 meter span which is moving on top of the extreme rows of piles and this will lift this precast units and place it wherever it is required. What you are seeing here is a steel liner which is used for construction of piles. 
normally they will uh, add the cost of the gantry and other things into the individual components because the, the contract will not be paid for this gantry and all which is very expensive. Last class I told about the bracing that is required. So, this is the type of bracing which they do it though it is inside the harbor they still have connected this bracing. They have placed the beams here and only piles are driven here and they will be placing the beams afterwards. This is the barge which is used to dump the sand which is uh, taken from elsewhere from a nearby berth they will take it on a barge and take it very close to the berth under construction and fill it. I was this is the finished uh, completed view of the second container terminal what you are seeing is the 30 meter span in which you have the rails which are fixed these are the fixtures that is coming into picture. There are some bollards which are used to tie the vessel and you may see some fenders also below the water level this comes under wharf accessories. Now we will go section by section first section is the piles and diaphragm wall we have to first uh, position and uh, set the piling equipment then we have to make the liner for the pile then we have to bore through the liner into the founding level into the soil up to reaching the founding level then you have to tie the reinforcement keep it ready and lower it into the bore then we have to make the reinforcement for pile muff and do the concreting either in situ or precast. Then we do the concreting of the piles though we can use precast and the cast in situ pile, but mostly in situ concrete is used for piles for birthing structures because these piles are large diameter typically 1000 to 1300 millimeters. Then we have to dressing of pile muff that is the pile we have to dress so that we remove some lean concrete at the top. Then we use the precast concrete for pile muff. So, pile muff is made in two stages one is a precast and another is a cast in situ. So, once you complete the pile, we do some pile test both low strain and high strain integrated test or static load test. Then we will see the diaphragm wall. Diaphragm wall construction is somewhat similar to the pile construction. There is a separate equipment for doing the diaphragm wall. These are the 11 items for which we will see how the cost estimate is being carried out. You are seeing uh, one tripod here this is a conventional winch which is used this is time consuming whereas this is called as a rotary rig which will uh, drill through the liner. Typically the liner is about uh, 6 millimeter in uh, thickness it is uh, rolled from a plate and uh, made a circular section and we make in uh, 6 meter or 3 meter pieces and then weld it circumferentially. Each liner plate is welded longitudinally also then we will be lowering it then we will bore through this and add another liner like that it goes right up to the founding level. Sometimes it will not go up to the founding level when rock is there they will stop at the rock and then they use bender and slurry to bore through the rock or even stiff clay or dense sand they may not provide the liner right up to the bottom. Now we are seeing uh, the liners which have been completed earlier days they use the liner also by a gantry their gantry means there is a platform over which you have the piling rigs this is used to drive the liner in this particular project they have a floating barge using which they have completed the liner to make it faster these are the bracings that has been made to connect at the top providing stability. Once they complete the liner they provide the reinforcement inside. Then they concrete the pile and when you want to provide a fender the cutoff level what is called is the cutoff level this is the cutoff level here is higher for uh, other places whereas when you want to put the fender the cutoff level is lower because the fender should be between the low tide level and high tide level. So, here they are using the in situ concreting above the precast pile muff. So, what you are seeing is a precast pile muff with a circular portion inside hollow 
So, this portion will be done in situ for the pile cap and this is the precast pile map. We are providing sufficient eccentricity because from the center line of the seaside pile to the face of the berth is about 3.3 meters or more than 2.5 meter code specifies that this distance is 2.5 meter. So, we have to provide a very large cantilever and for the precast units you should provide sufficient bearing on either side. So, for a typical berthing structure if you have about 300 piles let us say for each pile when they go and start pitching the liner for each number we have to give a rate. So, here we have given the serial number the description of the work what is the rate in Indian rupees and the unit in which it measured. So, here it is in number then we have to provide the liners which is 6 millimeter in thickness per ton you have to calculate and then you have to find out the rate. This rate is 2000 ton 45000 now it may be 54000 rupees it depends on the cost of the steel plate plus about uh, 6000 rupees per ton is the fabrication cost for the liner. Then we have to bore through the soil. So, the soil strata uh, differs from sand, clay, rock and all, but uh, here we have given 6100 for all type of strata except rock and uh, rubble as a mistake here it is rubble layer. So, there the cost is higher that is uh, 7100 and this is 8100 this is per running meter. So, this is for a particular diameter of the pile. So, it may vary depending on the diameter of the pile and type of soil strata. So, this is the liner what you are pitching. So, this is your water level, this is your weight level, then may take it through the hot strata. This depth is typically 5 to 10 meter. Suppose the diameter of the pile is about 1000. 200 millimeter. The item is uh, liner weight is uh, per ton. Suppose let us say this uh, top level, the liner is about plus 4 meters. The bottom level of the liner is about minus 16 meters. Bed level is about minus 10 meter. Let us say, for example, that this is the data what we are getting. The length of the liner is about 20 meters. Then uh, the circumferential area is pi into diameter is 1.2 meter into 6 mm is the liner thickness. This gives the volume of liner. Suppose the thickness is about 6 millimeter. Pi d into t that gives the circumferential area into length of the liner is about 20 meters. This gives the volume multiplied by 7.8 tons per cubic meter. I have made everything in cubic meter. So, this will give some tons. So, per ton when the weight is given this is this is how we calculate the bill of quantity per pile knowing the liner bottom level, liner top level diameter of the pile we will calculate what is the weight of the liner that we will multiply by the rate what is given. Then when you are boring through soil, so this is the level at which you have the soil, so you have to bore through this. Suppose this is a soft soil, you have one rate, this is the hard soil, this is another rate. So, here the depth is about 6 meter, let us say the pounding level is about 26 meter let us say and this is 10 meter. So, boring through uh, in this particular project there is some rubble layer already existing uh, because of some old construction that is why we are given this item. Otherwise if it is a rock strata it is 8100 rupees per running meter. 
this is how the cost has to be worked out. So, bill of quantity is this is 6 meter, this is 10 meter. If the rubble layer is not there, we will not include that layer. This is the boring cost for the pile. Next is reinforcement for the pile. So, you calculate how much reinforcement you are putting and per ton you uh, the rate is given use that. Similarly, reinforcement for the pile muff the rate is almost same then we put the concrete for piles that is 6000 rupees per cubic meter. Sometimes they will ask more cost for this it depend on the grade of concrete. So, how, what is the BOQ for concrete this is for liner steel liner. Suppose you want to get the BOQ for concrete item that is equal to pi into 1.2 square by 4 this is the cross sectional area into the length is about 30 meters this will be in cubic meter calculate per pile how much it is. So, based on this uh, you can get the concrete quantity the reinforcement steel for pile is typically in the initial planning stage is assumed between 200 to 250 kg per cubic meter this also you can calculate once you know the cubic meter for each pile based on this you can calculate how much is the cost. There is some uh, uh, you can including the steel liner boring reinforcement if you want to get some approximate cost whatever concrete quantity comes if you multiply by 25000 rupees you can get some approximate cost estimate. Suppose you do not want to go through all this exercise steel weight separately steel uh, liner weight separately concrete cost separately reinforcement cost separately boring equipment shifting and all you can do it like what I have discussed, but if you want to get an approximate cost concrete cost will be concrete quantity multiplied by 25000 rupees per cubic meter will approximately give the cost of this pile. So, this uh, approximately this will come uh, this will come around 300 cubic meter that means, it will come around 7.5 lakhs per pile cost of pile will be approximately 7.5 I think it is coming 30 cubic meter pi d square by 4 will be approximately 1 and 30 cubic meter it will come 30 cubic meter into this value is approximately 1 pi d square by 4. So, 30 cubic meter into 25000 will become 7.5 lakhs per pile. So, this gives approximately the cost one more block cost estimate is there suppose the birth size is 300 meters by 30 meter approximately the cost is about rupees 1 lakh per square meter that means, uh, this will be about 90 crores this is the approximate cost for a typical birth of uh, length 300 meters and the width to 30 meters the approximate cost will be 90 crores. So, after doing this exercise we give uh, get exact cost otherwise uh, we can calculate like that also what I have written there. So, that uh, 1 lakh per square meter includes all the elements. So, here we are seeing the reinforcement cage what are these spaces what is this Huh? What is this? This white color thing. It is called as a cover block. So, when you lower the reinforcement from the top, we should have adequate cover for which you do it. This is helical uh, uh, stirrups which are provided, and this is a reinforcement cage. You see the people wearing helmet and all, safety is very important in any birthing structure. So, even when you go for site visit we are supposed to wear the safety helmet here you can see the cover blocks which are kept 
the spacing in which it is provided. Then we have to dress dressing of pile to place the pile muff, it is not dressing of pile muff. So, that each pile number is about 1000 rupees. What, what we do is we do a trummy and we do the concreting, the concreting is done right up to the top. So, once you complete the concreting they remove about 300 to 500 mm of concrete. Suppose this is your cut off level they cast about 300 to 500 mm above and then remove this concrete because when you do with the bentonite slurry that concrete at the top will be very loose. Then they do the precast concrete for pile muff that is 5200 per cubic meter then they have in situ concrete for pile muff. Then we do the pile load test for that also we have to indicate the cost. Number of pile test will vary depending on the number of piles it is some percentage of total number of piles is to be carried out. If we do a low strain integrity test that also can be included. Here we are seeing the deck element there is a chamfer given here. So, when you have the precast and the in situ construction there should be some integrity between the precast and in situ that is given by this shear stirrups what is provided here like this and this is how they stack it the space is limited and this is a U type construction which is made for the beams with reinforcement in between. So, this cost is going under precast and inside what is going is in situ. Why do we do precast and in situ construction? Easy to Huh? What is it? No, why do we do precast and in situ? Why not we do is in situ itself? Huh? This speed of construction, not the easiness or anything else. Speed of construction, you can make the precast elements beforehand and complete the work, and farm work can be avoided. So, in C, we cannot put any farm work and other things. So, for that reason, we do this. Then uh, the integrity is uh, to be ensured that is the main thing that has to be done. The main thing is to make the construction fast eliminate the shuttering required. So, here you are seeing this uh, precast pile muff there is a opening here inside which will be done in situ concreting. There are some pedestals which are projecting above this is used to support the cranes you are seeing another pedestal here this is to support the beams. There are two beams one is the cross beam another is the longitudinal beam cross beam depth may be more and longitudinal beam depth may be less. So, to place the longitudinal beam which is having a smaller depth we may provide a pedestal like this. So, you put one beam here another beam here another beam here another beam here and then we concrete the inside portion. We take the reinforcement from the, from the beam inside here and inside here and do the construction. The similar uh, this is some uh, procedure for doing the pile load test. So, here what we have done is we have put the weight required suppose the capacity of the pile is a 400 tons we have tested for 1.5 times 400 that is 600 tons you stack the weight of 600 tons and use a jack below and then apply the load. Otherwise you can uh, test this pile and uh, use this as a reaction pile that is also possible. Then diaphragm wall, so when you want to construct a diaphragm wall, the diaphragm wall is a continuous wall. So, what we do for diaphragm walling is, so this is a continuous structure which is going all along the berth. What we do is we do what is known as a primary panel, this is done first. Typically the panel size is about 4 meters, the thickness is uh, vary from 1 to 1 1.2 meters and uh, they will do this continuously then they will come back and do the other panels like this. So, they will first complete uh, 
the primary panels then secondary panels. So, these are primary panels these panels are secondary panels in between what they do is a this is called as alternate panel method. We have I S code for construction practice which is I S 9527. So, here uh, in cross section they construct some pre trench wall this width is 1.2 meter then they will bore through this right up to the bottom. So, the other direction is they continuously bore in this direction then they lower the reinforcement cage and then they concrete it. This is called as the guide wall. So, this is your uh, ground level typically this goes for about uh, 0.2 meter this will be for 0.2 meter or it can be 1.5 by 1.5 also. So, this uh, guide wall is uh, given in terms of cubic meter then uh, the excavation is also done in cubic meter whatever is the excavation quantity will be the concreting quantity that also will be given. Then we have the steel there are different grades of steel 415 can be used or 500 can be used depending on the type of steel. Typically for this diaphragm walls just like piles I have written the steel quantity will be about what we are inserting will be about 130 to 150 kg per cubic meter of concrete. Then only you will get the optimum design for pile you can have slightly higher reinforcement steel 200 to 250 kg whereas, for diaphragm wall it is 130 to 150 kg per cubic meter. Then we will move on to the next item deck structures we have a precast concrete there are two items here one is to make the concrete another is to place. So, uh, this placing is for uh, lifting it from the yard and uh, placing it at the exact location it is a combination of precast and in situ concrete in situ concrete we have to put then we put some lean concrete on top of the deck structure. Then we may put some wearing coat, then reinforcement bars, then supplying and laying. These are the items which we have to see. So, here we are seeing the reinforcement bars which are given here, these are the gantries which are used. This is for the in situ concrete, the bars coming in two different directions. Then, precast cement concrete also in terms of cubic meter this is for beams slab trench walls uh, depending on the grade. Then placing of the precast element each element when you are lifting and placing these items are given separately because as soon as they complete the precast concrete that uh, payment will be made. Once they bring it and placing it in the exact play exact location then this payment will be made this item rate contract we prepare so that the contractor will get the money as and when he completes the work particular item of work that is why this concrete rate is given. This will ensure the cash flow for the contractor. This shows the precast yard there also we have the cranes we have the beams which are cast and here we are seeing the beams which are placed here and then the slab reinforcement some concreting completed. Here we can have the junction detail how the junctions are there from precast elements with the pile cap. Here you can this gives a better view where you have the place where the concrete is being taken for in situ portion this is the U type precast elements which are placed. Then some portion of the deck slab is finished here then another portion will be done subsequently. Then we have the other components the same precast item like that in situ concrete then we provide a lean concrete wearing coat then uh, reinforcement bars 
then supplying and laying of uh, GI pipes this is for uh, draining the water from the deck slab and other items. Then we have the wharf accessories the third system that is the fender, bullard, ladder, mooring rings, safety chains, expansion joint, the expansion joint laying bitumen sealing compound and fixing of MS inserts this is either for a conveyor system or for cranes this insert has to be placed. So, these are the various wharf accessories this we have to design and accordingly we have to provide this in the estimate for various items. This particular figure we are seeing the fender this fender is placed you are seeing certain some damage to the structure here what you are seeing this is uh, one of the berth in India where uh, after 10 year of construction this whole uh, fascia wall has got completely corroded because poor quality of concreting you can see the leaching of uh, uh, not leaching the reinforcement uh, strain which is coming from the reinforcement bars and here there is a crack also that is taking place. We are now carrying out the study to find out what is the repair procedure that can be carried out. This repair procedure is typically about uh, 10,000 rupees per square meter if you take one square meter of area the cost of repair is approximately around 10,000 rupees it depends on the type of repair which you are doing. There are different types of fenders that you will discuss in a separate class and these are the bowls which are used to fix the fender. Supplying and fixing position of rubber fenders this is for a cell type we have to give the dimension and other things the cost varies from 6 lakhs to 12 lakhs depending on the size of the fender. Then we have the bollard of 100 ton capacity which is about 2 lakhs then we have the ladder then uh, the cost is given for the ladder here 20,000 marine rubbing strip 15,000 mooring rings safety chains expansion joints where we fix the MS angles and the plates bituminous pad 20 mm thick 1000 rupees per square meter supplying and laying, uh, laying bitumen sealing compound 500 rupees per running meter this MS inserts come, uh, consisting of MS flat in service trench that is about 50,000 this is to provide the services in the service trench. Then we have another major item that is coming here that is the dredging formation of temporary bend stone pitching and if you are using gabion box you should give a separate rate for gabion box. So, the dredging rate is about uh, 250 rupees per cubic meter we have to say what depth you have to put below C D. Uh, in some places we are putting a gabion where we have to go deeper 15.5 meter then formation of temporary bend if you are doing it uh, then it will be 125 rupees per cubic meter then if you are using a stone pitching 400 rupees per cubic meter if you are putting a gabion box it is 4500 rupees per number the size is about 3 meter by 1 meter by 1 meter including supply and filling the gabion box with stones these are the various item that may be required when you do the dredging this figure what we are seeing is uh, a dredger which is dredging in between the main cross beams there are piles below this this side is the land side and that side is the sea side I will tell you why we have to go in for this type of dredging. Then this another mechanical excavator a cutter section dredger with teeth here this is used for rock dredging this is used for clay dredging you can see the teeth here. So, these shoes will be removed once in a way so that we can cut through the rock even up to M20 25 grade compressive strength rock similar to M25 grade concrete can be cut using this cutter. So, this uh, coming to the dredging is a very important component of any birthing structures. Sometimes uh, dredging is given as a separate contract, but sometimes it is included in the birth contract itself. Especially when you have to form a rock to 
embankment below the berth there are various uh, types of cross section for a berthing structure if we use a diaphragm wall we do not have to do the rock to embankment otherwise we have to suppose this type of structure you are using you can dredge it here and leave the slope like this there is no synchronization required suppose you use this type of construction so when you are dredging the slope at this and you are filling the sand here you get a sand fill like this then you put the rock to embankment sometimes they build it on the land and then they will start dredging here in such a case the slope will not be formed see this uh, there is a project in Cochin where uh, they were building a structure on the land this is a structure which they want to build it somewhere here the birth will be built here then afterwards they will dredge it up to this level this is the dredge level which is required minus 15 they will remove the soil subsequently when they started removing the soil subsequently like this this uh, does not form a slope like this this was forming a slope like this we assume a slope like this when you dredge if it is a clay layer it becomes nearly a vertical cut but suddenly it will collapse then it will fall down here to avoid that we have to remove this uh, soil in this slope using that slide I have given a mechanical excavator in between the pile bends we have to do that we have uh, three types of soil one is clay another is sand another is rock these are the three types of soil which we will in encounter normally for clay it may be around rupees 250 to 300 per cubic meter sand it may vary even 150 to 250 per cubic meter for rock it may vary from 2000 to rupees 4000 per cubic meter so this is the rate with which we have to do if it is a rock the cost will be about 10 times 10 times that of sand and clay clay the cost is more mainly because for clay we have to use some other type of if it is in the open sea when you are dredging it can be very low cost but if you have to dredge it below the berth to form a slope the clay will be very expensive sand is a very uh, good material for dredging if you dredge the sand it can be used for reclamation also and it can be disposed also without turbidity and it is very easy to transport through pipeline also rock dredging is the most difficult thing if the quality of the rock is very similar to m20 or 25 grade of concrete it can be done through a cutter section dredger but if the rock is of uh, higher strength then we have to do some pre treatment of rock this is done by explosives so we will uh, lower the explosives in pre drilled holes suppose you have the rocky strata here what they do is they drill some holes this is your water level so they drill the hole through this they lower the explosives here and then they blast it and then they loosen the rock then they use the cutter to remove the rock so that in that case the cost will go up to 4000 rupees per cubic meter this is the various uh, methods by which uh, they do it so the bill of quantity is a very important uh, exercise that you have to do because uh, the cost of uh, structure depends very much on the individual items what you are estimating here there are certain uh, requirements suppose you want to construct this structure this is done in 18 months period for a length of about 900 meters and a width of 30 meters so if you want to do this construction very fast what are all the things that is required 
you need the equipments. So, they have a floating craft with a pile driving rig like this which was uh, driving the liner. So, that uh, the piling rig is not required to drive the liner, liner is already available means the piling rig will come and start boring it. So, we have about 5 rigs in this uh, 3 rigs in this country and 2 rigs in this country and uh, 2 floating barges to drive the liners. These equipments are required to finish the berth in time. Suppose you have uh, 900 uh, meters of the berth and you have 5 rows of piles at every 7 meter center to center. What is the number of piles required? Let us say that the length of the pile, pile, pile length is about 900 meters divided by 7 into 5 about approximately about uh, about 650 piles. You can this piling gantry with uh, 5 rigs approximately we can do per day at least about 3 piles. then you need about 220 days for driving 650 piles. So, this uh, uh, per day if you can make 3 piles to make 650 piles we need 220 days. Once you are completing the pile you can bring the deck system from behind and then start doing the operation, but this uh, number of uh, piles per day to 3 numbers cannot be achieved initially because the piling rig setting and the gantry erection and all will take about 3 to 4 months. Then towards the end after completing the pile it will take another 6 months to fill back the area and put the deck slab and accessories. So, about 9 months you have to add this is about 7 months 9 plus 7 16 months is required to do this operation. But uh, they found it very difficult to achieve the target. So, what they have done is there are two ends for this starting from this end this is the southern end this is the northern end. In addition to these two gantries they started from the other end also with another two gantries to achieve the target. So, time is the essence of the project so for which you have to mobilize this equipments and the space given for them is somewhere here only for precast yards they do not give good space. So, the space management also is becoming a problem and this type of gantries which is made of uh, 30 meters running on the rails is also essential. So, once they complete this uh, piles, pile caps and precast units like this then they can pour the concrete and then continue the deck slab they will place in between the beams then do the in situ concrete. There are certain requirements for uh, doing the construction because concrete will take 28 days to attain the strength. So, the gantry can be moved only after 28 days is realized for the pile. Similarly, you can lift the precast elements only after 28 days, but sometimes they will lift even after 15 days. Then so once they finish the slab on top of the slab if they want to move the equipment that also strictly we have to do after 28 days, but they do the calculation how much time is required for that and then accordingly what is the strength achieved after 14 days or 21 days they allow that. So, once the structure is completed then they have to remove the gantry also and there are certain supports taken from the existing piles that also has to be finished. So, once you finish it there are certain components like rail fixing and the cranes also will come not by road it may come by barges only that they will unload it here and then position it at this location. They fix the bollard this fenders and other things. So, totally about 18 months is typically considered for this type of construction ok thank you.